So welcome back to the sixth episode of Hello, It's Better to Talk. Today I'm going to be talking about what we found out after my mum's funeral about her sexuality and how my Auntie Judy and I coped with it all. Um, my Auntie Judy had made a photographic display at my mum's funeral saying, my sister, the Enigma, but she just didn't know. I think none of us knew what we didn't know. And whilst we got through the funeral, you know, like my mum would have liked it. We celebrated the things that she was proud of, actually being married to my dad, the life they had, me, her grandchildren. We celebrated all of that. But behind it all was this huge secret and an old family friend, Gwen, had promised to tell me exactly what had happened and answer any questions that I had. So this episode is going to be all about that. Hello, my name's Helen Garlick. For 35 years, I was a family lawyer and mediator, but I kept secret what was happening in my own family of origin. Now I know it's time to talk about it. So I'd like to warmly welcome you to Hello, It's Better to Talk. So my mum, Monica Garlic, died in 2017 when she was 86. And she'd been married to my dad, who died just three years before, for 59 years. We never knew the secret that she carried to her grave. And I'd found out about it just before, before the funeral, but I really felt that I couldn't tell my mum's younger sister, Auntie Judy, about it. Because not only did it involve my mum, so her sister, but it also involved Judy's best friend at school. Because the thing was that Gwen, who I'd always known of as a family friend, and I knew that she was gay. She was married to somebody who I'm called in, in the book Maud. Um, she was always there at the parties. She and my mum seemed to have a, you know, quite, a, they could kind of have a shared sense of humour together. Gwen was just always around and my mum was often phoning her. Um, but anyway, Gwen, I'd contacted Gwen to say, my mum's written this envelope, Gwen, and I wonder if you could tell us, tell me more about it. And she said, I'll answer any questions that you've got. So I spoke to Gwen and she said, Yes, it's true. I had a relationship with your mum before she got married. And in fact, we went down to live in London together. They'd left Doncaster and gone and rented a, a flat in Knightsbridge just behind Harrods. That's classic, my mum. She loved Harrods and anything to do with royalty. Um, and they lived there for some time, I think about six to seven months. And then my grandmother my mum's mum, found out where they were and came down to London to confront them. And according to Gwen, told my mum that she, they had to stop what she called these dirty deeds. I mean, even saying that makes me feel... There's such a gulf between what's happening now and what was happening in those days, which was the mid-50s. So my grandmother told my mum that she had to leave London, leave Gwen and come back and get married. Now, amazingly, my mum, who'd have been 23 at the time, did exactly that. She went back to Doncaster. She was a secretary and she got a job with an office furniture salesman um, in Sheffield called George Garlic. So you probably know what's coming next because George had a son called Geoffrey and he was studying at Cambridge he, got a, he was the first in his generation to go and do a degree and he was do, studying law and he was uh, he came back, was studying and he met my mum and then the family story went that he saw her, she saw him, they both blushed and that was it. So there was kind of this story that got repeated about how they met. Uh, but when I was growing up as a child, they never used to cuddle. They didn't cuddle on the telly, they didn't really touch one another my mum found it very hard to touch my dad. And when he was um, needing care later on, she couldn't touch him to cut his nails or cut his hair or do anything like that. She just had a sort of real distaste for all of that, which was difficult to see. Um, but anyway, so Gwen told me 
we have this exchange of emails and telephone calls that she'd first met my mum at Judy's 12th birthday party. So boy, oh boy, this was another revelation because my mum was 19 when she met Gwen and Gwen was 13. So that, when Gwen told me that, I immediately blurted out, but Gwen, that feels predatory to me. You know, if I, like there's such a big age gap and I was trying to kind of work it through in my head. So if, you know, if Gwen had been a guy and my mum had been a guy, would that make it worse if my mum had been a guy? And, you know, but and Gwen said they started a relationship. She said she, she was very much in love with my mother. And Gwen said, and I own every decision that I've made in my life. Your mum didn't take advantage of me. I, I wanted it too. So I still, that's kind of like a bit of a, moment for me um I mean you know let's face it I think it's really difficult thinking about your parents having sex in any event perhaps all of us would really prefer that we had a virgin birth of some form or another but when you kind of find out after your mum's died that she was gay and that she'd had some a relationship with somebody who was 13 was tough but then it, that was also going to be a massive thing to hear for my auntie Judy because she was seven years younger than my mum. Gwen was her best friend at school. My mum was her sister. She didn't know about my mum's sexuality. She certainly knew about Gwen's sexuality, but Gwen had kept it a secret from her, kept that relationship a secret from Judy all those years as well. So I knew that if I told Judy before the funeral, it would just be too much to contain for her. So I, I had to go into the funeral, my mum's funeral, holding that secret, which was weird, but I thought it was better than seeing Judy just being overwhelmed by it all. So I told Judy afterwards and then she and I and Gwen started find you know, well, we, Judy and I started finding out different things. Gwen was emailing both of us, sometimes phoning us. So I found out that after my mum had come back to Doncaster, then um, she decided that she needed to find a husband. And when she found Jeffrey, my dad, she asked Gwen, um, how to get him to propose to her. And Gwen said, well, I don't know. So it was a strange situation. And Gwen was very clear with me that she didn't have a relationship with my mum, a sexual relationship with my mum after they got married. But she did say, but your mum did have other relationships and some of them are named on the white envelope that she left to be found after her death. So I also found out from another friend of my mother's who I had lunch with, um, that my mum had made a pass at her, but she'd actually rejected it. And then two weeks later, my mum had said that my father had fallen in love with her. I've called her in the book Evelyn. And that she should have a relationship with my father. So Evelyn and my father should get together. So over, the, over a lunch period, then I then found out that my father may have... I, at the end of the day, I, I, do, I don't know because Evelyn is still of that generation the silent generation, women who were born between 1928 and 1945, who kept quiet, did the good thing, did, you know, if you, if just kept quiet. So I don't know whether Evelyn and my dad had a relationship. Evelyn did say several times, I was very close to your father, which makes me feel that she probably did have a relationship with him. But, you know, if maybe looking back on it, if he'd found some happiness when he knew that his wife um, didn't want to be to have a sexual relationship. I, I mean, I really don't know. There was another woman called Margaret Johnson who was a massive flirt. Gwen said that she'd looked after her at Doncaster Royal Infirmary and she flirted with men and women and it was the biggest flirt she ever knew. And she'd had a long-term relationship with my mum and she was the woman, Gwen said, that I think that was the only other woman that your mother loved. So I knew my mum had other relationships um, I found out all of this and I, I was at one point reeling and I can remember my older daughter Unity saying to me, mum, you may need to boundary this. There's maybe just too much coming out. I wanted to run away, actually. I just felt that all of this had been going on and I hadn't noticed. And here was I, a family lawyer who kind of prided myself on picking things up. My gaydar clearly didn't work at all. 
So that's another thing that happened. And then what I also felt was I knew now my, my, now my mother had died. This was the chance for me to write about what had happened with my brother in 1981 when he died. And then I kind of felt, flipping it, mum, you've trumped it. It's like, I'm now going to write about this too. And people said, you need to write two books. But I was very determined to write them both together because there's a link. David and I were brought up with, with a secret, with my mum's secret around. And so we learned in a way unconsciously not to talk about things, to keep quiet about things, not even to confront people about things that just didn't quite feel right. So I knew I'd have to, to, to write about both of them and I've done that. So in next week's episode, I'll be telling you about the launch of my book, No Place to Lie, the secrets that are within it, and other things that actually I haven't even revealed in the book. So I look forward to seeing you then. Goodbye from Hello, It's Better to Talk, and love and light to you all. <laughs>